Hey guys, in this video I wanted to share an idea for how to spruce up your strumming and it'll sound a little something like this. So let me show you what I did there. We'll start with the D chord. When I play a D chord, I have an open D string, then my pointer finger is on the second fret of the G string, ring finger on the third fret of the B string, and middle finger on the second fret of the E string. So what I want you to do is take away your middle finger from this chord shape. So when you strum, it'll sound like this. But right after we strum, we're going to add that middle finger back on the second fret, and it'll sound like this. Now the trick is, you've got to have some velocity behind your finger when you add it back. Otherwise, you'll just end up muting the string. And this can definitely take some practice to build up both the strength and the accuracy to make it work. But it's a really nice effect once you've got it. So once again, I'm going to remove my middle finger from the fretboard, strum, and then add my middle finger back. And it sounds like this. You could actually try this with any of your fingers in the D chord shape. So let's see what happens when I do the same thing with my ring finger, which is holding down the third fret of the B string. I like that sound. Let's try the same with our pointer finger, which is holding down the G string. Another lovely sound. The next chord I used in my example was an A chord, and that's played by holding down the second fret of the D, G, and B strings, which means our E string is open. You can do that using your pointer, middle, and ring fingers, or you can bar with your pointer finger and use your middle finger on the B string. I know that's challenging, but if you have bigger fingers, it can actually be easier. But whichever way works for you is great. So what we're going to do with our A chord is leave the B string open and then hammer on to the second fret. That'll either be with your middle finger or your ring finger, depending on how you play the chord. So that'll sound like this. Or if you're barring with your pointer, it'll look like this. I know this will be very challenging for some people at first, but I promise that with practice, you'll figure out the right amount of pressure needed to make that string ring out. Let's go to the next chord in my example, which was a C chord. In our C chord, we're playing the second fret, open G, first fret, open E. So for this chord, I'm going to remove my middle finger and hammer onto the second fret of the D string. And that'll sound like this. When it comes to using this trick, it is all a matter of personal taste. There will be certain sounds that you enjoy and certain sounds that you don't. But play around and figure out which sounds you enjoy. One of my personal favorite examples is using this technique on an F major 7 chord. The F major 7 chord is 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret, open. I like how it sounds when I remove my middle finger and then hammer on to the 2nd fret of the G string. So a regular F major 7 sounds like this. But if I use my hammer-on trick, it sounds like this. And I just think that's a lovely sound. So you can try this on any chord and see which sounds you like. For practice, let's go ahead and play through that chord progression I played at the beginning. I'll put up chord diagrams and we'll simplify the strum pattern to just down, 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 down. And we'll use the hammer-on trick every other beat. So it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. The chord progression is going to be D, A, C, G. That's a one, five, flat seven, four in the key of D. It's going to get difficult once we start switching chords, but hang in there and rewind as many times as you need to. You can also adjust the playback speed to fit your needs. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
That's all for today. Let me know when you figure out your favorite chord to use this trick on.